Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. Last video, first video I have prepared on valuation of shares. Now in this video, the remaining theory part of valuation of shares I'm going to explain. So already I have explained you what do you mean by share? What are the different classification of shares and what is meant by the value of shares? market value, face value, intrinsic value, yield value, all these things and why the valuation of shares is required that I have explained completely in the first video. So if you have not watched the first video, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject advanced accounting new and select the videos of valuation of shares. Be perfect about the concept, then only we can go for problems. So before starting the problems, First of all, we'll finish off the theory. Take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I'll explain every point in detail. Now, in the last video, I have explained you broadly, we have two uh, methods of finding out the value of ship. The first method is intrinsic value or assets backing method or breakup value method. Different names are given. Intrinsic value and the value intrinsic value is based on the net worth of the company. That means how much the shareholders are having the fund in the company. In that way, intrinsic value will be calculated. Secondly, yield value. The yield value depends on the profit, the earning of the company. So these are the mainly two methods. So regarding intrinsic value, I have explained you in detail in the last video. Now remaining part, I'm going to explain you how to find out the intrinsic value of equity share. See carefully this format. In this format only, we are going to solve the problem. We are going to find out the intrinsic value of share. First of all, assets. The goodwill, if there is any goodwill existing in the balance sheet of the company, then we should take goodwill. Then sometimes what will happen, it will give you the information to calculate the value of goodwill. So we have different methods, average method, super profit method, capitalization method. So any method we have to adopt and find out the value of goodwill. Then fixed tangible assets, fixed intangible assets, investments, all non-current assets. Non-current assets consist of inventory, stock, debtors, that is trade receivable, bills receivable, cash and cash uh, equivalent, all these are the current assets. So we take fixed assets as well as current assets. Take the total. From total external liabilities, outside liabilities. The outside liability consists of debentures, bank loan, sundry creditors, outstanding expenses, provision for taxation. These are the external liabilities. Take the total of the external liabilities in the first column. Right? Take the total in the second column. Now assets minus external liabilities. Then we have to deduct preference share capital including if any preference dividend in arrear. If some years preference dividend was not paid, it is due. That also we should take the preference share capital and arrears of preference dividend. Take that amount and deduct. The remaining amount is called net assets or funds available for equity shareholders. Remember, whatever points I'm discussing now, the same thing we are going to apply in the formula. And I suggest to my uh, viewers, always keep a notebook, pencil, calculator, pen ready. Whenever I say something important, note it down. Then only you can be able to get full confidence on the topic. Now, value of each share can be ascertained by this formula. Net assets available or fund available for equity shareholders divided by number of equity shares. Denominator will take number of equity shares. This will give you the value of each equity share. Now, partly paid up shares. Sometimes a company may have fully paid up shares and partly paid up shares. When we see the balance sheet, it will be given like this 50,000 equity share of 10 each fully paid. Next to 20,000 equity shares of 10 each, but only 5 per share paid up. Remaining 5 per share not called and paid up. So sometimes partly paid up and partly uh, not paid up, that's even. So if there are both fully called up and part paid up shares and partly called and paid up equity shares, if this 
happens in the problem then how to find out the value of equity share here you can see carefully then the uncalled amount on partly paid share should be added to the net total net assets by way of notional call so we imagine that whatever amount is due on one class of shares the amount due is called up and the shareholders have paid the amount in that case whatever is the amount due on partly paid up shares we are making a call notionally not in practice notionally we imagine that the remaining part will also be called up now what will happen the amount which is now called up will be added to assets added to assets that means amount received now uh, and notionally convert all the partly paid shares into fully paid so when we make a notional call and take the amount that money has been received then we can say all the shares have become fully paid there are no partly paid shares the total net assets or funds available for equity shareholders should be divided by the number by the total number of both fully paid and partly paid shares in order to get the value of each fully paid share so after converting the partly paid shares into fully paid then all the shares will become fully paid up then we divide we apply the formula net assets divided by total number of equity shares will get the value of each equity share the value of each partly paid up share can be ascertained by deducting the uncalled amount from the value of each fully paid up share so first of all we are converting the partly paid up into fully paid up then find out the value of the share that will be the value of fully paid up share now in order to find out the value of partly paid up share deduct the uncalled amount from the value of fully paid share suppose the value of fully paid share comes to 20 rupees fully paid up share but one class of share is there for which 5 rupees is due not paid so this 5 rupees due will be deducted so 20 rupees is the value of fully paid up share and 15 rupees is the value of partly paid shares that's all now the intrinsic value method or net assets backing method is generally applied under the following circumstances see both the methods will have their own advantages and limitations so this intrinsic value method will be adopted normally in these three circumstances the first one for formulating scheme of amalgamation when two companies are merged amalgamation then in that case we find out the value of the share by intrinsic value not by yield method then for acquiring majority of shares and controlling company one company will control another company acquire with to another company in that case also we want to find out what is the value of the share and the best method is intrinsic value lastly when there is liquidation liquidation is wound up when the company is wound up at the time of winding up we again calculate value of share according to intrinsic value method that's all so completely have explained regarding the first method intrinsic value of share now i'm coming to the second method that is called yield value yield basis or earning basis both means same now valuation based on rate of return intrinsic value is based on net worth assets and liabilities but this yield basis depends on the rate of return so the term rate of return means a return which shareholders earns on his investments normally how much a return a shareholder an investor will get from investment so every industry will have different normal rate of returns depending on the risk attached with the company now it is always expressed in terms of percentage here the normal rate of return which we calculate is in terms of percentage the rate of return can again be classified into rate of dividend and rate of earnings when we say rate of return means there are two types of returns the return in the form of dividend and return in the form of earnings so we have two different formulas to calculate the value of share according to yield method the so first method is valuation based on rate of dividend dividend is that part of profit of the company which is distributed among the shareholders a company will not distribute all the earnings from the total earnings some amount will be kept in reserves retained earnings 
the remaining part will be distributed in the form of dividend. So here, value valuation based on rate of dividend, how much dividend the shareholders are getting. So this method of valuation of shares is suitable for small block of shares because small shareholders are usually interested in dividend. There are two types of investors. One category of investors, they are more interested in getting the uh, income, in getting the return, that means dividend. So some investors are there who, whose main concentration is to get the dividend. But other shareholders are there, investors are there who are not concerned about the dividend. They are concerned about the earnings. So normally, if only small block of shares are purchased or sold, in that case, yield normal, sorry, valuation of rate of dividend. Valuation based on rate of dividend. So this method is suitable when only small number of shares are bought and sold. They are more concerned about dividend, not on earnings. The value of share according to this method is ascertained as follows. Value of share is equal to expected rate of dividend divided by normal rate of return into paid up value per share. This is the formula we apply to calculate value of share according to yield basis where valuation is based on rate of dividend. That's all. Now valuation based on rate of earnings. Actually if a shareholder wants to purchase in bulk or if more number of shares are required to be purchased, in that case, the investor will not give much concentration on dividend. The investor will focus on earnings. So long term investor, they are interested in rate of earnings. Short term investor, they are interested in rate of dividend. That is the difference. Now formula is also similar. How to calculate the value of share according to earning capacity method. This method of valuation is suitable in case of big investors because they are more interested in companies earning rather than dividend. The long term investors are more interested in the earning of the company. They will not give much importance to dividend. Now the value of share will be determined by the following formula. Same formula is there only the numerator is changed. Here the numerator is expected rate of dividend and here expected rate of return ERR. So simply value of share, yield value of share is equal to ERR, expected rate of return divided by NRR, normal rate of return into paid up value per share. That's all. So these two methods we apply for yield basis. Now how to find out expected rate? In numerator we have expected rate of return, ERR. How to calculate ERR? Expected profit divided by equity capital into 100. So before applying this formula, you have to find out the ERR. Once we, you have find out, you have calculated the ERR, then we can calculate the yield value, right? Now last, third method is dual price method or average method, fair value method. This is not an independent method. This is only an average of the first two methods. The first method intrinsic value, second method yield value. We add up intrinsic value plus yield value divided by 2. That method is called fair value method. That is a, a dual method. That's it. The theoretical part of this chapter completed. So in these two videos I have explained to the best of my knowledge from beginning till end. So if you have watched these videos two, three times definitely in examination you can be able to attempt the theory question. And apart from that, these things are going to be, I mean, done while doing the problems. So that's why the theory is very, very important. Don't underestimate, don't neglect. So inshallah, in the next video, I'll start the problems on valuation of shares. So if you are satisfied, give a like to the video. Share my channel. Subscribe if you have not yet subscribed. And buy the super thanks which is given below my video. Inshallah, we'll continue the problem in the next video.